They're going to be taking a tour here of the USS Growler. It's a uh, missile sub, and we're going to take a look at the inside of that. It's at the Intrepid Museum in New York, and uh, this is free and included with your regular Intrepid admi admission. They do have guided tours, however, if you want to go and get a special tour through it and get a lot of information, they do have a guided tour that's about $15 to $20, depending on your date. So like the Intrepid, the Growler was destined to become scrap or target. It was saved to become a permanent museum piece here at the Intrepid. It is one of the rare guided missile uh, submarines on display that you can walk through. So here's the Growler underway in 58. The submarine was commissioned in 1958 and only was uh, operational for six years before it was decommissioned in 1964. The reason that it was decommissioned after only six years was that this ship had to surface to launch its missiles and the newer ballistic missile submarines did not require you to surface and so this, this submarine was made obsolete pretty quickly. A crew of 90. This is some displays before you enter the sub to tell a little bit about the history and what it was like with missile submarines in the late 50s, early 60s. It was not, not long at all after these first missile submarines came on that the ballistic missile submarines made these others obsolete. This was the Regulus missile that was used for the submarine Growler and was also used on some surface ships. And this shows the difference between a Regulus missile and a submerged Polaris launched missile launching from underwater. This little chamber kind of gives you just the rhythmic sounds of the screw turning in the back of a submarine. Kind of a neat acoustic experience. And so now there's a little bit of a line here, a little bit of a wait to get on the submarine. Make sure you can jump through a hatch before getting on the ship because you will have to crawl through some hatches. So now we're boarding the USS Growler. And I'm pretty sure these doors were not original. So this would have been the missile hangar. Missile hangar could hold two Regulus missiles and they would be brought from here out to the main deck to be placed on the launcher. Give you a little preview video here before entering the ship. So this would have been the other missile hangar or where the other missile would have been stored. Step. This is the navigation compartment in here. And this is the only missile submarine that you can walk through in the United States. This is the Missile Checkout and Guidance Center in here.
Small hatch. Pantry. And some bunks. Wardrobe. More crude berths and a very narrow space to move through. Officer stateroom. Commanding officer stateroom. Chief Petty Officer quarters. And a very small office. Another hatch to go through. Watch your head. And no, three different jobs. Oh. Um, he steers, he does the pitch, he does the depth. And these three are the youngest on the boat. Your first job is to drive on every submarine. Really? Even, even our newest brand new submarine, the day you come on, you drive. That's how you learn the boat. Oh, actually, that's impressive. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's a really good on-the-job training because here's the officer of the deck. You're in the control room. Mm -hmm. Everything he hears, and he'll hear everything, mm -hmm. you hear it too. Right. Yeah. And because your job is to learn everything on the boat, we're in three shifts, six hours on, 12 off. Six hours you drive, six hours you sleep, six hours you learn. And everything you've heard in your last sh shift, you start finding. Clean the less claustrophobic than I am. <laughs> you know, they test you for claustrophobia while you're in submarine school. You're tested for monotony, which is even worse. No, because it's the same. The same people, the same look, the same. Um, you're tested for, um, uh, you're interviewed by psychiatrists. You tested for practical things, how to, uh, things that will drive you crazy, yeah. smells and noises and vibration. Yeah. And you take written psychological evaluations, the kind where they ask you the same question four different ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Psychometric. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if you fail all the psychological tests, they put you on a submarine because you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen? Is the sonar room? In the radio room. Going through a bit of the galley here. Where the crew would eat. This looks like some more berths, enlisted man berths. Cruise quarters. And when I was a flight attendant, flew on planes on the international flights, we had a little tiny closet room on the airplane and they had bunks like these. They at least had a tiny sense of what it's like to bunk in one of those bunks for a while. Another hatch. Another head. Screw washroom. The space is very narrow. The passageway is basically one person wide. These are the distillers 
remove the salt from the ocean water. And this is the engine room. Engine control room booth. Lots of switches and gauges in here. This is maneuvering room in here. towards the stern of the boat. This would be the aft torpedo room right here. Kind of passed by the forward torpedo room. This is kind of behind us as we enter the ship or enter the sub. This would be the aft torpedo room. There's two torpedo tubes right there forward. Heading back up to the deck of the submarine. And looking towards the conning tower. See one of the hatches down inside the submarine here. So I hope you enjoyed this quick tour of the Growler. Very, uh, very interesting. I love checking out these submarines. And uh, as a kid, I thought I'd love to uh, serve on a submarine. Just didn't happen, but uh, it's fascinating to check out the history and see just how cramped these things are. So thanks for watching. And remember kids, have a good time all the time.